For the first time in nine months, the U.S. men's national team took the field, taking on Wales in Swansea, ended up a scoreless tie. It was a good effort. Uh, this was something we were uh, we circled on our calendar anticipating because the development of these young players playing for the top clubs in the world, playing in the biggest competitions in the world, playing for the biggest clubs again like Juventus and Barcelona and Dortmund and Chelsea, Internacional of Porto Alegre. That's very exciting. So we, we put a lot in here, invested a lot, and people are starting to get excited again about U.S. soccer. This was a malaise. No one cared. Nobody cared. From 2018, 2019, that was bottom of the, the bottom rung in sports. No one cared. Why should they? Now people are starting to care. And we've got to give them reason to care. So I, I have to bring U.S. soccer into this. When they started the camp, they brought in Christian Pulisic. Everyone said he was injured. What's going on? And then he was sent back to his club. What is That does not make any sense. If he's injured... He's got to deal with that injury. You bring him in maybe to see his teammates. That, no. And then day of, U.S. Soccer tweets out the official 11. And there was a mistake. And then they retweeted it. And then they had another tweet. And I'm like, guys, when people want to get excited, you can't do that. That just takes all the wind out. You know, you're like, it shows you it's got to be a first class Operation, we all have to chip in on this. As journalists, we all have to make it look really cool, bring people in so we can make some money, right? So we can get excited about this for World Cups and make this sport as big as it possibly can. So let's get to the game. First thing I noticed, a bunch of kids by their age, and let's, let's be honest here, we are handing the keys to this team and we have to hand it to the keys. Gio Reyna's 17, Serginho Dest is 20, Weston McKinney 22, Tyler Adams, 21. Conrad De La Fuentes, 19. Eunice Musa is 17. Johnny Cardoso, 19. The list goes on. Kids are going to serve in this team, and that's fine. But they come out, and I see them line up, and I think to myself, look at these guys. Whole careers ahead of them. You can see it in their eyes. Whole careers ahead of them. They uh, are representing all of us during a the toughest year in recent memory or possibly ever, I don't know, 2020 is just getting worse and they are representing all of us, picking up a broken program. And you know what? I looked at them and they said, they want that smoke. They want that responsibility. You could see it then. You could see it in the way they played. The way they played was great. 4-3-3, fullbacks flying, high press. They adapted well after a shaky start. You expected a shaky start. And they were able to, I, I, I think, show signs of grasping this style. Greg Berhalter, he's gonna. I, I love that they we're playing this style. This is kind. This is very new. There's a lot of new things for this U.S. soccer uh, men's team. You look at what U.S. soccer was so about was was all about for so long, and that was we are tougher than you, we are fitter than you, we will outrun you. We, uh, we will outwork you. Now it's about technical ability. We didn't have a lot of that historically. Now we have bushels of it with this team. That's really exciting. You got to harness it though. And it's a big job for Greg Berhalter and his coaches. And I, I, we're going to give him all the faith. I'm again, excited that he's even running an offense or an attack like this. But uh, Greg Berhalter this is the big spot to get this technical ability there and those other features of U.S. soccer hopefully shall follow. But it, it's, it's something we've never seen before from a U.S. men's national team. Gio Reyna, he is going to be the star of this team. Christian Pulisic, we cannot rely on him as I said earlier. If he joins the team, it's great, but it's Gio Reyna's team. That said, you've got to find a position for him that really works. He was all over the place, winning 50-50 balls, hitting balls across the field. He's got it. He is going to be one of the top 10 players in the world before too long. He is it, but we've got to make sure we have him in a position where we get the very best. And that's easier said than done. That's a tough job. We get to the game. Uh, again, Serginho Dest is locked in as a guy you can rely on. And it's beautiful because he can play right back or left back. He's got that swagger. 
the midfield, you can lock those three guys in if you ask me. Eunice Musa, Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney. I think that trio, could you could lock them in for 10 years. Who knows? They were the, the highlight of the day. John Brooks, a good leader in the back as well. And we're getting to the elephant in the room, and that is the attack. Uh, we, we, we can be critical because we identified this before the game. We knew this was going to be an issue. No Josh Sargent. His team did not clear him to travel. No MLS players like Jossie Zardes or Josie Altador. They could all help. Uh, but this false nine, that wasn't a false nine that they played. It was a guy looking for space and really not going anywhere. So I don't know what you call it, but they need goals. And not to sound alarming, but that really has to pick up the pace now with regards to that because everything else comes to a screeching halt, hence the scoreline. How they do that will determine how successful this team will be because everything around that number nine is pretty good. Goalkeeper, Zach Steffen, I think it has to be made abundantly clear. It's not his team. He doesn't look comfortable playing out of the back still. I think Matt Turner and Ethan Horvath have to get a look here at some point. But listen, I am. Uh, there's a short list of things to be critical about. Very excited. Let's keep it going. Monday against Panama. This is now must-see TV, and we'll all see it together. And make sure you subscribe to the Soccer OG.